Hey buddy, so there was so much curiosity about primary constructor in the market, in the programming world these days. So what Microsoft has done, they have released primary constructor with C Sharp 12.0. Now, how this primary constructor is different from those typical constructor that we are habitual of using in our projects. Okay, once we complete this video, we will get to know that this is going to reduce a lot of code in our projects and also it will increase the readability of our code. Now, let's jump into the code and see what all we can achieve with this primary constructor. So, let's go ahead. Okay, so here we are in the Visual Studio and we are going to use this console application to understand this whole concept. Okay. So the first thing is prerequisite. Okay, so here you see the line number five. What I'm saying, I'm using .NET 7.0 and language version is preview. Otherwise, I can't use it, right? I need that .NET 7 and I don't need to mention any version, right? I'm saying preview, whatever the preview version is. So right now when this video is recorded, C Sharp 12 is under preview, right? So that is why I'm mentioning this preview or just go ahead and update your Visual Studio with .NET 8, then you don't need to mention that .NET 8 support by default all those features, right? That C Sharp 12.0. Oh, okay, now let's jump to our class, right? So this is my class. This class, this you see the file name is class one, we don't care, but the class name is person, right? And if you remember, this is we are habitual of. We always go ahead and write, you know, these backing fields, right? These are called backing fields. And with the help of constructor, we assign those constructor parameter to those backing fields and then we, you know, use wherever we need. So in this example, if you see, we are saying that, you know, I need to return the full name, first name, last name, I'm concatenating and you know all those backing field and constructor initialization okay now if i have to do the same job with primary constructor what all i need to do so what we will do i will you know just copy this thing paste it below and change the class name let's say person with primary uh, constructor right so this is my other class now I don't need this constructor. I'm going to delete it. Okay. I don't need these backing fields. I'm going to delete it as well. Whew, my code looks simple, right? But it is still crying. Okay. Now here is the interesting thing. What all I need to do, this is little magic. So I'm going to make it constructor right after class name, right after class name. You are going to mention it as a constructor, right? So I'm going to pass the same parameter what I was using before, right? So here you go. And you have made a primary constructor successfully. Congratulations to you. Right. Okay. Now back to the topic over here. So let's just remove this, remove this as well. That's all. You are done with your primary constructor. You have successfully written this whole logic to these lines only. Your code readability, everything is super cool now. Now it is easy to read, right? This is your primary constructor. You don't need to define any constructor. You don't need those backing fields. Just your business logic. Focus on more on your business logic now. Right? Now, how it works. And you know one more thing. Is it like what if I need multiple constructor? Will it work at that time or not? Yes, the answer is yes. But before we jump into those multiple constructor, let's try to run it. And let's say even if the output is still the same or different, right? So let's go to program class. Let's save it before. And now this is my normal class. Let's copy this, paste it here. And you know what? Let's differentiate it with what? I will say, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, come on, here you go. So I'm going to differentiate it with this and let's copy the class, copy it, paste it. I'm going to create other object and let's say this is my object, right? With primary constructor and here you go. So you see the way we are calling primary constructor and normal constructor, everything is same, right? Person, I'm passing the parameter here, the same thing. 
right but the way of implementation is different now let's see the output okay i'm going to run it and let's see the output okay so here should be the output come on here you go the output is same right because the input was same the output is also same okay so that means it is just you know internal implementation the business logic and all things are going to behave same okay let's close it now let's jump to multiple constructor what if i need a empty constructor can i do that yes we can do it let's try that okay so i'm going to copy it paste it here and let's see if it allows or not so i think it is not allowing let's make it public huh let's see the error what it says so it says that a constructor declared in a type with parameter list must have this you see this is very important this constructor initializer what that means okay so that means whatever you constructor you need you need empty constructor you need three parameter four parameter five parameter any constructor right that must call this constructor primary constructor now how it works so you have to say colon and you have to say this and then you have to say i'm going to make a call to primary constructor let's say string dot empty so for now i'm saying string dot empty and here also because it requires two parameters so i'm passing those two value you see so these are the default value so whenever there is a call to this constructor this empty constructor it will always make a call to that primary constructor right now let's go there and see the magic now if i need more constructor i can always do that right so i don't need that empty constructor anymore so what i will do let's say you know declare just one parameter and let's say one here you go right and we still need to call that primary constructor every time anytime you declare a new constructor make sure you are calling to that primary constructor so it is very tightly attached to that primary constructor okay now let's see how it works so this time what i will do uh let's go there and you know what i'm not going to call this way so i will make a call with empty constructor this time and now let's see how it behaves so let's see if it allows or not i'm going to make it empty hmm, it is working fine so what would be the value so as per the business logic what we are saying here we are saying this is empty and we are not passing any value to you know or we are passing only empty value to primary constructor so that means you know the output should be empty right so let's see how it behaves i am going to execute it and let's see here you see there is no value right it is empty now what if i go here and i say you know this should be the default value let's say the first name is default value i am passing the perveen right now let's see how it behaves okay so i'm expecting only perveen this time here you go right so that means it is always making call to your primary constructor right so you know i would suggest use primary constructor when you really don't want to make you know a lot of code right for all these property initialization for all those things you can start using primary constructor and that will make your code more readable so that's all for today video i will see you in the next video with some more interesting and cool stuff